Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to do a basic shoulder opening practice. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified when a new video is available. We'll start seated on a chair and bring a brick in between your knees, your thighs. So you've got that narrow blade shaped brick between the legs. Establish your feet the same width as the knees. Inner thighs press against the brick. Let's interlock the fingers and settle the knuckles onto the crown of the head and press the head up into the knuckles. So there's this stage where we're exploring the elongation of the neck by pressing up into the hands through the crown of the head and feeling these trapezius are not creeping up. So as we descend the trapezius, we're contributing to the elongation of the neck. The elbows are out wide. And as we work to stretch the arms up straight momentarily, feel into what you're doing in the lower back. Are you pushing the belly forward, squeezing the lumbar in, or can you maintain the long lumbar spine? Draw the navel up. So as you pull the navel up, draw it back towards the back abdominal wall, but without dropping your chest. Upper sternum lifts as the crown presses up into the knuckles. Inhale, stretch the arms up, squeeze the elbow tips in, so the upper arms coming closer towards the sides of the head and feel that the shoulder blades can elevate to enhance the feeling of lengthening the side body, the side chest, the arms, the armpits. The, the shoulder joints opening as we lift the shoulder blades up rather than trying to jam the shoulder blades down. You see from the side, if I take the arms up but keep the shoulder blades down, then there's only a certain degree of opening that the shoulders will allow. I can't press the forearms back, but if I lift the shoulder blades up, then I can work to press the forearms back to create more opening through the shoulders. So even though we're allowing the shoulder blades to lift, still notice that you're wanting some space around the neck. There's not a complete closure there. Crown of the head still lifting. Knuckles of the fingers pressing up. Elbow tips squeezing in. Then exhale the arms down and swap the interlock. Opposite index finger interlocking on top and zip the fingers all the way up to the webbing. Then knuckles onto the crown. Descend the trapezius. Lengthen the neck by pressing the crown up into the knuckles. And feel into what are you doing in the legs? Squeeze the brick with the inner knees. Pressurize the inner feet down. Inhale, stretch the arms up. Squeeze the elbow tips in so the upper arms are strong. The elbows are straight. And as you allow the shoulder blades to lift, press the forearm bones back and move the lower shoulder blades into the back. So there's this action, I'll show from the side. As the forearms press back, lower shoulder blades move in. So you might like to try that. Let go of the interlock of the fingers. And as you raise the right arm, take your left hand onto the lower shoulder blade and pull the lower shoulder blade into the ribs as you encourage the forearm bones back more and more. But don't go thrusting the lumbar forward. Contain the abdomen, lift the navel, draw the navel back towards the back abdominal wall, keep the lumbar spine long, and explore that mobility in your shoulder. Let's do the other side. Left arm up, hold the lower shoulder blade with the right hand, and press the lower shoulder blade into the back ribs as you then Encourage the forearm bones back. But again, don't thrust the 
lower ribs and the lumbar spine forward. Keep that lower back kidney area broad, navel lifting as you're focused solely on opening the shoulder joint. And then release. Now we'll come back to our Urdhva Badangulyasana with that opposite interlock. We've got the arms up, press the forearm bones back as the lower shoulder blades squeeze into the back body. Then lift the back ribs away from the back of the pelvis and move the back of the pelvis down away from the back ribs. Navel lifting up and moving back towards the back abdominal wall. And exhale, the arms down and rest. Now let's take the brick from between the legs. You can keep the knees and feet about hip width apart. Hold the brick between the hands. You can curl the thumb and the little finger around the outer edges of the brick for now. Press the knuckles of the fingers into the brick. So you've got a firm grip of the brick. It's not just a relaxed grip. Elbows are straight and then raise the arms up all the way up overhead. Allow the shoulder blades to elevate as you work the shoulder blades, the lower shoulder blades into the back. Then the forearm bones can press back as we challenge the shoulder joints. Now, can you press just the knuckles into the brick? So the heels of the hands and the knuckles are pressing into the brick and you're letting go of the grip of the fingers and the thumbs. And then all the way down, pause and have a moment of rest. I'm turning sideways so that you get the vision of the mid body as we do the same practice. Again, hold the brick in front of you. Before you even take the arms up, assess what are you doing in the back rib lumbar spine. Can you keep the back of the pelvis down away from the back ribs rather than letting it creep up and pull forward when we take the arms up? So maintaining that long lumbar spine. Inhale, as you take the arms up, you might come against this point where the shoulders don't want to go any further, in which case that's often when we go into that lumbar rib movement so that we give ourselves the sense that we're opening the shoulders. But if you restrain the navel, you restrain the lower front ribs, you restrain these back ribs from squeezing in and the lumbar spine from squeezing in, then challenge the forearm bones back and you see where your shoulders are at. Now can you let go the fingers but press the knuckles into your brick and go on drawing the navel up and back towards the back abdominal wall. The neck and the throat passive and then exhale the arms all the way down. Now, with a similar grip of the brick, we explore doing a same kind of practice, but with the elbows bending and straightening. Reach the brick out in front of you, arms straight, and then bend the elbows to a right angle, squeeze the hands against the brick, and keep your elbows within shoulder width. Don't let them go wide. Elbows within shoulder width, take your uh, forearms, so they come parallel to the floor, upper arms perpendicular to the floor. And again, notice the elbows, are they moving out? Can you keep them contained within your shoulder width? Press the elbow tips back and then go to straighten the arms. Bend the elbows, elbows in and forward and down. Now we try without the fingers gripping onto the brick, so just the knuckles pressing onto the brick. Reach the arms forward, bend the elbows to a right angle, keep the elbows contained to your shoulder width and upper arms vertical, forearms horizontal, elbows in and stretch the arms up straight, squeeze the knuckles against the brick, 
Bend the elbows again, elbows in, shoulder width and forward and down. And we'll try now using a belt around the elbows to help contain them. Make your loop in your belt shoulder width apart. Then bring that just above your elbow creases. And again, hold your brick. So keep the fingers peeling away from the brick, pressing the knuckles into the brick. Bend the elbows. So your upper arms are parallel to the floor. Then take the upper arms perpendicular to the floor. And you've got to elevate the shoulder blades to get the strap over the head. If the shoulder blades don't elevate, the belt will just hit you on the forehead. Lift the shoulder blades up more and more to bring the belt over the top of the head. And then notice, are you digging the lumbar spine in? Are you pushing the belly forward? Can you draw the sit bones to the knees enough that the lumbar spine lengthens? Then stretch the arms straight. The belt may loosen because we're holding the brick. And then bend and bring the arms forward again. Have a rest. Now let's place the belt just above the elbow crease again. So it's sitting on the lowest portion of the upper arm and reach your arms forward as if you have the brick between the palms. Have the strap taut so the strap is not loose. You're resisting the arms against the belt and inhale, take the arms up all the way up and remember lifting the shoulder blades to bring the belt over the top of the head. If you don't lift the shoulder blades, the belt will hit you on the forehead. Shoulder blades lift and then press the forearm bones back without digging the back ribs in, without digging the lumbar in. Forearm bones press back as the lower shoulder blades squeeze forward into the rib cage. Sides of the body long. So as the pelvis anchors through the sit bones into the chair, the rib cage lifts, particularly see if you can lift the back ribs away from the back of the pelvis and move the back of the pelvis down away from the back ribs as you draw the navel up. And then come forward, lower the arms and remove your belt. Another way to explore mobility in the shoulders is to do a practice of Gomukhasana, but mobilizing, moving in and out of the pose, holding a brick and passing the brick from one hand to the other. Establish your Tadasana stance. Let's have hip width feet. Press the thighs back and the buttocks forward so that your tailbone can lengthen down, your lumbar spine can lengthen and the navel can draw up. Maintain that control, that holding through the pelvic abdominal area and use your left hand, hold the brick, reach forward, so I'm mirroring you, reach forward with your left hand holding the brick, raise the arm up, then as you bend at the elbow, watch your elbow doesn't go out wide, keep your elbow tracking in the same line as your shoulder, bend the elbow, reach the brick down your back, and take the right hand up the back to catch hold of the brick and then you swap. So now as the arms cross in front of you, the right hand is holding your brick. You raise the right arm up with the brick, bend the elbow and again, keep your elbow tracking so it's vertically top the shoulder. Reach the left hand back, catch your brick behind the back. Don't go pushing the lumbar spine in, tailbone down. So if I turn sideways, and you can see from that side perspective, I'm intending to keep the mid body quite stable. Just working with the movement of the arms, the challenge in the shoulder mobility. So again, just watch that you're not going into that strong lumbar lordosis as you reach for your brick. Navel up. 
tailbone down. And each time you transition, the top elbow is pointing up, not out. Now, let's swap. So we go the other way. Can you pass the brick? So now, if I'm not mirroring you, I have the brick in the right hand, and I'm gonna pass the brick up the back with the right hand to catch with the left hand from the top. And back down. So now my left hand passes the brick up the back, right hand catches, and again, just watch you're not squeezing the back ribs in. Tailbone down, the brick gets passed to the right hand and I bring that forward and down. Pass the brick up and catch it with the left hand. And again, now the left hand passes the brick up, right hand catches the brick. Let's do one more, reach the right hand up the back, Stay strong in the lift of the navel. And then let's lower the brick. Working with the brick that way, passing it to and from one hand to the other is a fun way of approaching the Mukhasana and asking the shoulders to mobilize. And it also helps the brain. It challenges the neural pathways in the brain. We're going to do the full pose now and hold the pose. And I have a belt to demonstrate. If it's difficult to bring the hands behind the back and take that monkey grip, then we can use a belt. So if I mirror you again, I'm going to hold the belt You'll be holding the belt in your right hand, dangle the belt down the back, and then bend the elbow and make sure your elbow sits vertically top the shoulder joint, not out to the side. Then the left hand can reach up the back and you take a clasp. As you hold the belt, you can walk the hands further and further to each other in order to work towards that monkey grip, the fingers reaching to hold each other. Elbow tips are vertically up and down. So the right elbow tip vertically up, left elbow tip vertically down. Not out to the sides, not diagonal. And certainly we're not trying to bring this top arm behind the head. You see the head gets thrust, thrusted forward that way. Sit the upper arm next to the side of the head. So the head's neutral. Keep the legs, the hips, the mid body in Tadasana. Thighs are pressing back, buttocks are pressing forward, pubis to navel is lifting. Then keep hold of your belt with the right hand and stretch the arms out as you release from that side. Then swap hands. You can use the belt, dangle it down the back. Left hand holding the belt, right hand reaching up as the left hand reaches down. And you might find that on one side it's easier. You can perhaps do away with the belt as you reach to take your monkey grip. Fingers clasping each other, elbow tips up and down. So your left elbow tip vertically up, right elbow tip vertically down. Stay firm in the thighs, thighs are pressing back. Firm in the lower abdomen, pelvic abdominal lift as the buttocks press forward and the front pelvic bones lift. And keep the lower back ribs lifting away from the back of the pelvis. And then to release the arms, release your grip, stretch the arms out wide and lower the arms. The next shoulder opening pose we're going to work on is utilizing the back of a chair or potentially a bench something that's about hip height. We'll use the belt and the block in a moment, but for now, let's place the elbows onto the chair back. So you can bend your knees as you reach the elbows down. It's, it's the very lowest part of the upper arm bone closest to the elbow joint that is resting on the top of the chair. Then we'll bring the hands together so the palms are in prayer posture. The elbows need to be within shoulder width, and usually that is determined by the width of the chair anyway. So elbows are in, 
within your shoulder width, palms are touching, and then we'll walk back so that the spine comes parallel to the floor and the legs perpendicular to the floor and perhaps you can settle the hairline onto the top of the chair. And as you walk the legs back, just watch that if you're supple, you don't collapse the ribs down. Contain the lower front ribs and draw the navel up towards the back abdominal wall. Keep this lumbar spine long and broad. And the upper arms are parallel to the floor, forearms perpendicular to the floor. Looking at creating that long side body, armpit chest long, sides of the waist long. Press the head of the thighs back away from the rib cage. Now to come out of the pose, bend the knees, look forward, step forward, stand up, and let's bring in our belt and brick. We've got our shoulder width loop. Place that, again, just above the elbow crease. So it's on the very lowest part of that upper arm bone. And then we'll bring the brick between the hands as we did earlier. Palms and knuckles against the brick. Elbows are on the top of the chair. Walk back, bring the feet to about hip width, press the thighs back. But then notice what are you doing in the mid body, especially if you are supple in the hamstrings. Watch that you're not just um, dropping the, the lumbar, dropping the belly. Can you contain the belly, contain the lower front ribs and keep the lower back ribs broad. As you then press the head of the thighs back away from the chair, feel the waist is long, size of the chest long, the shoulder joints opening. Smooth, steady breathing. Keep the elbows at a right angle. So the fingertips are pointing up towards the ceiling. The ears are settled between the upper arms. Even if you have the capacity to take the head down towards the floor, don't do that because you'll cause the shoulder blades to move in towards each other, the deltoids to move in towards the neck. And we don't want that. Keeping the space broad between the shoulder blades. Now to release, bend your knees, look forward, step forward and stand up. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.